you come to the check out this session, starting a brewery, what does it take? Um, I am Mike from the Beer Amigo. Um, this is Travis, my cohort. Um, we are here with Mike Philbrick from the Port Jeff Brewing Company, Rich Vandenberg from the Greenport Harbor Brewing Company, and Steve Inrahas from the Town and After Brewing Company of Colorado. You see gentlemen on the left are from New York breweries, located right here on Long Island. Um, we'll start out with Mike. Uh, Mike, if you could just uh, kind of tell us what the process has been like starting your brewery. I know it's very fresh and in your mind, so maybe you can elaborate on that a little bit. Uh, sure. Um, I, we just opened. We literally opened about four weeks ago. Um, and so the, I guess the process, you could say, is, is pretty fresh on my mind. <laughs> but it's actually, uh, you know, to some degree, it's, it's, uh, it's a relief because the process has taken such a long time to get to the point of opening. Um, you know, this isn't something that I thought of in May, like, hey, it's time to open a brewery and, and you know, you put the pieces of the puzzle together. <coughs> this is something that's really been, for me at least, uh, almost a three-year journey. So, to, you know, I've, I had envisioned being legal and pouring on the festival floor here, uh, you know, for quite some time. And the fact that it's actually happening now is, I feel like I envisioned it so many times that it, it's already passed. <laughs> but, uh, um, you know, it's it's a long process. There's I've started other businesses before and been involved, uh, you know, with other upstarts before. And the the brewing industry is definitely unique. Uh, a lot of it has to do with the fact that it's a controlled substance, and so you have to deal with a lot of federal issues. You have to deal with a lot of state issues as far as you know meeting the criteria, having the space that meets the criteria, filling out all the proper paperwork waiting for 10 months for them to actually look at all that proper paperwork that you filled out uh, with countless phone calls and things like that. But, um, you know, it's a it's a process, I guess, to say the least, and, uh, and I'm just kind of happy to get the beer. Awesome. Um, like I said, they just, um, Mike just opened probably like a month and a half ago officially. Right, yeah, we had beer on the street uh, meeting out to distributors such as uh, what we call in the business, or at least on Long Island, home distributors, uh, starting about six weeks ago, and then we have a tasting room right in our brewery that opened on the 15th, so really about a month ago. Great. Thanks, um, Rich, both you and John just recently celebrated your two-year anniversary this past summer. Yep. Um, I, in preparing for this, did a little bit more research, you know, looking a little bit deeper, and, and really saw where they started and, and the facility they were in. Um, yeah. Perhaps you can elaborate a little bit on what that process was like moving into a structure that was previously a firehouse. Sure. Yeah, so uh, we uh, actually officially opened up in July of 2009. My, my best friend John and I from, uh, from school, so... We're not really best friends. <laughs> 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 he, likes, he likes to think of, um, and he's my best friend now. Anyway, we've known each other for 30 years, so... Uh, but we opened up in Greenport, way out on East End. And I'm just curious, who here is like actually thinking about opening a brewery? Yeah, that's cool. So five guys. And I will say, you know, more power to you. And um, you know, the one thing that you can't be worried about is the fear of failure, because the fear of failure will actually prevent you from doing anything constructive. So we're a little stupid that way, where we don't have that necessarily that fear of failure. Um, but we were uh, out on the East End in Greenport, and uh, back in 2009, uh, I found this old firehouse, and I called up my uh, my best friend John, and I said, you know, John, back in college we used to talk about opening a brewery, and I said, John, I think I've actually found the building where we can actually open up this brewery. So. Um, much like Mike said, one of the things that you have to do, one of the things you have to address is all of the municipal approvals, all of the, um, you know, the um, talking to the state, talking to the federal government, getting all the paperwork filled out. That's probably seems like the most intimidating part of the whole process. Um, but really, you can negotiate that, you can get through that. It's not that bad, you take it one step at a time. We uh, took over this uh, firehouse. It was an old uh, star hose and eagle hook and ladder firehouse in Greenport. It's only about 2,400 square feet. Um, and we renovated it ourselves. Uh, did a lot of the work. We were mostly all hands on. Um, but we got through it. I approached the town. The town, the first, or the village, was very 
much like, you know, oh my God, well, I don't know, a bar, I don't know if that's going to work. But uh, I can explain to them, it's like a, it's like a, a winery, but it's beer. Um, and they were, they were very much, you know, like, all right, you know, that sounds, you know, interesting. So um, they, uh, they backed us up and um, got through all the paperwork process, you know, just kind of like squeaky wheel kind of thing, you know, you just kind of follow up, you fill out the paperwork, you make the phone calls, you're polite but persistent, you know, that's kind of my motto. And uh, ultimately, we were able to uh, accomplish getting all of our approvals in place. Um, got our system in, we, uh, we actually have a 30 barrel system, uh, I'm sorry, 15 barrel system uh, in, from Canada in place. And um, we are, we started out our first six months, we actually uh, started, uh, got our license approved back in um, about April, of 2009, and we manufactured and produced about 100, uh, roughly 115, 150 barrels in 2009, and then in 2010 we did uh, roughly uh, a thousand barrels, and uh, this year we're on track to do about 2,000 barrels, and next year we're going to be doing about uh, 4,000 barrels. So we've really been able to you know, continually ramp up that, that progress. But it starts out where, you know, it's John and I, my brother, every weekend, every school vacation, every available day, every minute of any hour that you had, we were there working on the brewery. We really did devote 110% of our effort to doing it. Um, it requires 110% of your effort. Uh, for John and I, it was a bit of a passion because we love to drink good beer. So the motivation was that at the end of the day, you know, we would have uh, some delicious beer to enjoy. Um, but you have to be willing to commit 110%. And you cannot be afraid of the fact that what if, what if, what if. And certainly those what ifs could, could actually possibly come to fruition. But you cannot worry about that. You have to kind of continue to press forward. Because if you do, especially now in this climate, in this environment, uh, there are plenty of people, as you, can, you, know, as you guys are evidence of, that, that are, are uh, happy to enjoy and drink good beer. So, you know, if you keep your eye on the goal, then you will, uh, you'll, you'll do fine. So, uh, you know, for us it was taking an existing space and uh, transforming it into a, a brewery where, you know, it's actually we got a tasting room upstairs and we have, uh, you know, uh, Brew house downstairs, and as I say, we're, we're making about 2,000 barrels this year. So, yeah, it's good. Thanks, Rich. Um, at the end is our friend Steve from Tommy Knocker Brewery, which is in Pal uh, Colorado. Um, I know that most recently Tommy Knocker has actually gone through a renovation of the group of. Um, can you tell us a little bit about, a little bit about that, considering Tommy Knocker has existed long enough to come to the point where they needed to almost reinvent themselves? Pretty much we invented ourselves from the physical establishment to all the way to our name. We've, for 16 years, we've been around since 1995 and uh, never changed anything. Hovered around the seven, eight thousand barrels of beer every year. Uh, happy doing that. Then all of a sudden we kind of had some new blood come in and decided to change up our image. At the same time, uh, we've had a surge in production. So we've also had to have production modifications. So we, between last year and 8,000 barrels, in one year, it looks, it looks like next year we'll be doing 16,000 barrels, 100% growth in one year. And we attribute it to the trend in craft beer, of course, but also we've reinvented ourselves in the marketplace as far as a new image, new icon, new logo. Uh, we hired, a, our, in 16 years, we've never had a marketing person or a sales person, really. So we hired uh, new sales staff and new uh, marketing person we're trying to like play the game from them. And it's working out really well. That's great. I mean, that definitely corresponds with what's happening in the craft beer industry and the growth happening there. So um, it's great to see that you, in the need to do that, and and you now have the facility to to cater to the volume that you could be doing, as opposed to just being, you know, complacent with what you were putting out. Yeah. Our physical building, uh, we've added. We bought the building next door to us because we live in a small mountain town, and uh, real estate is valuable as it is here in a different way. Uh, it's really tight there. Uh, 
and especially when it snows, it's going to occur. But uh, we bought the building next door, uh, built a bigger cooler, moved the byline over there, added 485 barrel fermenters, and then I added 122 seats. And we we're also getting up to apartments upstairs and adding vacation rentals. So we can try to do something like a European concept where you can stay in a brewery and, and uh, hang out with the brewers if you want, you know, do a brewery if home brewers and stuff. Nice, that's, that's great. Uh, that's a great opportunity. I'm going to look into that now. I'm going to come visit. Hit the slips and drink some beer. Tommy, not here.